Here is the complete guide on how to use forms in Jira Service Management. Jumping into my Jira Service Management project here, I'm gonna click on Project Settings on the bottom left, and then inside of the Request Management tab, there's gonna be a Forms tab here. So this is where we're gonna be building all of our forms, creating them, and then later we can apply them to individual request types. So if you're already familiar with Jira, you know that if you do go to a request type, so let me pull up Get IT Help just as an example, and you'll know that inside of these request types, we actually have custom fields already associated with them. So why would you use a form versus a custom field or custom fields like this? So let's say I drop in a field like department, which is a drop down, and this is gonna have several options associated with it. But let's say the department is gonna be IT. And if the department is IT, uh, we want another field to show up conditionally based on the department field that is selected. So within these custom fields, we actually don't have an option to do any of that, uh, as well as any kind of rich text formatting, so adding any kind of descriptions or adding any kind of uh, formatting other than the fields themselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and discard this and go to the forms and show you how that looks. So I'll go ahead and create a form and we have two options here, either from a template or just creating a blank form and going from there. There are quite a bit of templates to choose from. These are primarily gonna be focused on IT related projects or IT related projects, things like onboarding, um, things like uh, hardware requests, software requests. Uh, there's also a lot of other departments here that might, you might find useful that you can use forms from. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and build from scratch just so you understand the flow and how to use all of the elements of the form themselves. So I'll create a blank form here and let's say that this is gonna be a new hardware request. So I'll type in the name here at the very top, hardware request. And now below we can add our fields, formatting, and anything else. So as I mentioned, there's a lot of formatting options here and we actually have the ability to pretty much do anything. So I could say this is a heading and then I could make or turn this into a heading. And then below here, I could have bullet points, I could have numbered lists, checklists, uh, I could add spacers and dividers and pretty much anything that you could do in Confluence if you're familiar with that. You have all those formattings here within this forms builder. So when I add these items, I could also add fields. So if I have a heading here, I could click on the add fields. And then in here, I have a lot of field options that I could utilize. So if I click on long text and I'll name this summary, now we have a field called summary and it's essentially just a long text that an end user would have to jump in and fill out. Uh, we also have a couple of other options here, things like descriptions. I think the descriptions show up a little bit better here as well. Uh, so if I add a description, it shows up above the field within the uh, regular custom fields within Jira. That, that, that description actually shows up below the field, uh, which can be a little bit confusing since you're seeing it after the field itself. You might think it applies to the next one. Um, so I do think that the descriptions show up a little bit better here just in terms of the UI. You could add a default response and then you could link a Jira field. So this is gonna be a Jira custom field. So if I click the drop down, you'll see that I have a lot of options here for selecting a field and having it be associated. So I could also pick summary here, for example. And now the summary field, which is just a plain old field, is now linked to the summary field, which is a Jira system field or a Jira custom field. So we could also have the re response required or even match uh, regex patterns, uh, which is really cool as well. So what's really cool with these fields in particular is that again, we have a lot of formatting and conditional options. So if I click on add section after the summary, um, I'll actually need a conditional field that I could utilize. So let me really quickly add a dropdown field and let's just call this department like we did earlier. And then in this department, we'll say there are a couple here, IT, HR. Um, let's just leave those two for now to keep things simple. So now that we have a department, which is a dropdown, I'll click on add section. And now we can name this section. Let's name it IT, just so that I know it's only related to the IT items from the department. And then I'll show it conditionally and only when department is IT. Now this section below, anything below here is only gonna show up if the department IT is selected right above. So I'll add another field here and let's say uh, drop down and I'll name this um, access level. And now we're gonna give it a couple of choices, level one, level two, level three. So again, this, this may only apply to a team like IT or a department like IT. So I wouldn't wanna show this for an HR department. It's only gonna be relative and applicable to IT departments. So let me go ahead and save those changes. And now if I go to preview the form itself, 
I'll see the summary, the heading, the department, and now if I select HR, nothing happens. If I select IT, we have that conditional access level field showing up. So a lot of flexibility and customization options here within the, the form builder. Uh, and we could obviously keep going with this and keep structuring the form. I've seen pretty complex forms built out here. Uh, but after we have a section here, and let's say that we want to continue the form, in order to show uh, the rest of the fields unconditionally, so let's say the only field that I want to show conditionally is the access level, and then there's the rest of the form which I want to show at all times. I could add another section and then just show it always, and then I could type in all, just give it a quick name. And now anything I add below this section will always show up regardless of the department field. So let me add another long text, and let's say that we want the employee name. And once we have the employee name in here, we could save those changes. Now if we go back to the preview, we have this employee name showing up regardless of whether IT or HR or anything is selected. And if I click on IT, we have the access level field showing up right under department. So again, you can see how powerful this is going to be, especially for more complex forms. And this is something I utilize quite a bit with clients that we work with. Uh, what we do oftentimes is simplify our request types. Let's say it's going to be a hardware request. And uh, when we request a piece of hardware, we might have a drop down for the type of hardware. So let's say there's a hardware laptop. And then under that, we could have options for uh, MacBook or Windows laptops, uh, which again, only applies to laptops. But let's say they want to request a mouse. Then you have a couple of different mice options below that. So having those conditional options helps you to simplify the form for anyone using it. That way they don't have to go through and look at 20 different form fields at the same time. The form that they'll be submitting will most likely only have five to 10 fields in total. So it's a little bit easier for end users to submit a form like that and you can make those fields required. That way you make sure you gather all of the information uh, and then the end users aren't super tired of filling out a ton of fields or skipping over fields that aren't necessary. So apart from the building the form, once that's good to go, we could go ahead and apply this to an individual request type. There's a few ways we could do that, but I'll go into the settings tab to showcase a couple of other features here as well. Uh, but that's probably gonna be the easiest way. So I'll go ahead and save the changes just to make sure we're up to date. And then if I wanna attach to request type, all I do is check this box and then I'll select a request type from the list. So I'll select uh, hardware. I could search for hardware or poor broken hardware. That's exactly what I want. And now this request type or this form is attached to the request type and I'll save those changes. I could also just use a link directly to this form rather than using it through a request type. So if uh, there's someone that I wanted to send this link to directly, or like it says here, embed in a Confluence page, you could do that as well. Just by checking this box, selecting the request type it should go to. And then we're gonna copy the link and this link could essentially be distributed anywhere. Uh, a couple of preference options here. So you could keep this form open for edits. So the form is gonna be published once it's submitted. Uh, an agent can come in and unpublish it, make those changes and then republish it. Um, so if you wanted that to be unpublished and just left open to edits at all times, you could check that box. You could also save a PDF version of the form itself. Uh, this is actually pretty handy, especially if you're running automations within the forms themselves. So for example, you have a service management project where you have a form submitted and let's say that we want to pull over the form into a software project which is not something we can technically do since forms don't apply to software projects. But what we can do is save that PDF and then pull it over to another project just using an automation. Lock this form once it's submitted so only admins can edit. Uh, that just gives you another level of permissions. That way not any agent can come in and edit that form. Only admins can do that. And then show this form as recommended when selecting from a list of existing forms. And this is just gonna be showing you recommended forms primarily on the portal itself. So one other thing that I wanted to mention with these specific fields is the linked JIRA field. So I already mentioned that these could be linked to things like summary, any, any system or custom field within JIRA. The reason you wanna do this, so if I take this employee name, this isn't linked to anything. So once this form is submitted, this field is not associated with any fields or any metadata uh, or any indexing within JIRA. So Let's say I wanted to automate the employee name to show up in another ticket or based on the employee name, maybe I wanna change the summary of this ticket. I can't do that unless I link it to a JIRA custom field. Um, so if this is left unlinked, we won't be able to run any automations on it. There are no smart values for it. There is no API requests for it. So it's something that we pretty much only have information from within that individual ticket. 
So something that I pretty much always do is just link a JIRA field to every single uh, form field that I have. That way, anytime I do need to run an automation, I don't have to go through, recreate all those fields and map them to these forms. And I would definitely recommend going through and creating those custom fields first, primarily because once you do select a, a link JIRA field, so I'll show you exactly what I mean here. Let me see if I could find, I'll add a due date since that's gonna change the field type. So even if you selected a drop down here, it would overwrite your choices, but especially if you're selecting a different field type, it's going to overwrite all of your information. So I'll select due date here, which it's going from department to due date. And then it's gonna say change form field type to match JIRA field. And then it's gonna change the field type and then we have to change it. And it's gonna overwrite all of the information that we previously had. So I'll go ahead and confirm. And now this is a date field instead of a drop down field. And the same thing will happen for even drop down options since it's gonna be utilizing the, uh, the custom fields or the system fields as those drop down options. So you're not gonna have the ability to save what you've already created. So you might be doing double the work if you don't just create the custom fields initially. So that's typically what I do with almost all of my form fields. Again, that way I could run any future automations, use any of the smart values, and just have the ability to utilize the form to its full potential, linking to custom fields, et cetera, uh, pretty much at any time once the form is done. So that was a quick overview of the forms. Once you get those apply to request types, you should be good to go, but it's a pretty simple feature that is very powerful and allows you to have a lot of formatting and conditional options within Jira.